Hi, my name is Lauren. I'm the technical trainer with Genesis Attachments. In today's video, I'd like to go over some tools and practices for proper blade fastener torque and maintenance. The tools that are next to me are some of the components that may be needed when performing maintenance on your Genesis work tool. But before that, I want to mention that you always want to be mindful of safety. You want to make sure to read and understand the owner's and operator's manual and make sure that if you're doing this with the second person, that you're always mindful of what the other person is doing so no one gets injured. The first few tools I'd like to talk about are impact tools. This is a hydraulic torque wrench. You may not require one of these, maybe a large cleat or someone with multiple large attachments may require something like this, but uh, it has a reaction arm, one inch drive with a hydraulic power pack. It's fairly uh, cost prohibitive for most companies to own these. So of course in production, we use these almost every day. Uh, something that isn't gonna be used in the, on the blade fastener torque are the high torque devices. This is a, a battery powered, not so much an impact, but as a, a device that uses uh, a counter rotational uh, socket gripping these torque lock washers. The three quarter inch impact from Milwaukee, any other cordless battery powered uh, impact is handy to have for zipping bolts on quickly and easily. Uh, and the three quarter inch air impact. Uh, we also have a half inch uh, for removing and, and uh, installing nuts and fasteners uh, quickly without over torquing them. All of these devices, you need to be mindful of how much torque they produce so that you don't over torque your fasteners. If you are not aware of how much torque these produce, you could end up over torquing a bolt and stretching it, requiring replacement. We also have a one inch impact. Uh, on the larger fasteners, these are safe to use. You can uh, tighten bolts quickly and up to say five or 600 foot pounds without over torquing, over torquing a uh, say one inch bolt. Uh, so they're safe for that. But you don't wanna use these types of devices on three quarter and maybe even seven eighths inch bolts as they may produce too much torque. Some of the other tools here that you may need, uh, we have an air wand blow out dirt and debris from the bolt counter bores or blade seat pockets. The same with a screwdriver or a chisel. Uh, some of the tools get used in concrete and the bolt counter bores can get uh, jammed full of debris. Sometimes you'll need a screwdriver or a chisel of some type. That's also where the needle scaler comes in. Um, it isn't so useful typically with uh, scrap shears, but if you're using demolition attachments where uh, you have a lot of concrete or perhaps some type of mill slag or, or something that can compact into the bores, uh, these come in handy. You may also want uh, some type of breaker bar, whether it be three quarter inch, one inch drive, or, or even half inch drive. Uh, they can be useful for a number of different reasons. Um, some of the flathead bolts also have a well, they all actually have a hex. So if you're having trouble with the bolt rolling in the bolt bore, you can use either a ratchet or a breaker bar with a socket on it. Moving over to the primary focus of today's video, you have some, a variety of sockets that would fit the blade fasteners. These particular fasteners on the shear we're about to see are, are one inch fasteners and an inch and a quarter in the piercing tips. Uh, this is a three quarter inch drive socket and this is a one inch drive socket. In order to get the fastener torque up to the value that's required on these particular bolts, we're gonna use a one inch drive with a multiplier. The last couple of years, Genesis has transitioned primarily to lubed torque values on their blade fasteners as well as many of the, of the other fasteners in the shear. Uh, you can use anti-seize or a high quality lithium grease. They both work adequately. They will not only uh, help prevent the bolt from seizing, but it will also decrease your torque value and while maintaining the clamp load. Uh, so it makes it easier to torque the bolts because you don't need to pull as hard on the, on the tools. 
We also have a three quarter inch drive uh, torque wrench. This is this particular model, I believe, is a Proto or a Wright. Uh, they're both good tools. We use them in the shop regularly. They are good to 600 foot pounds. We have a torque multiplier. I believe this one is a Wright. It is actually a Wright. Uh, this is a 2.5 multiplication factor, meaning two and a half rotations of input will result in one rotation of output. We also have a reaction arm lever that we can use in locations where this arm wouldn't be long enough to reach the particular fastener we're working on. It's also not uncommon to see uh, long torque wrenches, six inch, or excuse me, six foot long torque wrenches on job sites. Uh, these are pretty handy in the fact that you don't need to utilize a multiplier, but they have torque value limits, I believe of a thousand foot pounds. Uh, so you can't torque all of our blade fasteners and our slewing ring bolts with uh, these types of torque wrenches. Unless, of course, you have smaller shears that don't utilize the largest bolts. Uh, these are a bit clumsy and can sometimes require two people to use them, but uh, these are a little bit on the clumsy side as well, so you've got to get used to handling both the wrench and the multiplier at the same time. So we'll end the tool review there, and we'll move over to the shear. Okay, here we are at the shear. This particular shear utilizes three different bolt types. We've got one inch flathead, one inch hex head, and one and a quarter inch socket head. Uh, all three of these bolts have different torque values. Those torque values can be found either in your manual or online on Genesis website at genesisattachments.com. There is a fastener manual. <clears throat> the fastener manual has a graphic, a generic graphic of the shears that shows where Fasteners should either be installed dry, lubricated, or with Loctite on them. These piercing tip bolts, all of these bolts are either used with uh, NICs or extreme pressure lithium grease. This bolt was just removed from the bore, so you can see the threads already has NICs on it. But what you would normally do is put some NICs underneath the head of the bolt and then put the grease or the NICs in the threads of the piercing tip. What that does is it allows the grease to stay in the threads rather than being pulled down the shank of the bolt, ultimately end up ending up between the piercing tip and the piercing tip tang. Uh, that in itself isn't a huge problem other than it actually reduces the, the friction and the clamping force that uh, helps hold those piercing tips on the job. The hex head bolts, these are one inch. They have a torque value of 772 foot-pounds, wet torque value. These would be utilized on the guide blades and in the front on the razor blade. The flat head bolt uh, has a torque value of 617 foot-pounds. Um, but again, we're going to be using a multiplier on these components so we need to adjust for the multiplication factor of the of the multiplier. <clears throat> Earlier I misspoke and said that it was a 2.5 reduction multiplier but it's actually a 3.5 uh, reduction. So for every 3.5 rotations of input you're only going to get one in or one rotation of output. <clears throat> the input is a three quarter inch drive, the output is a one inch drive. The piercing tips utilizing 1,545 foot-pounds of torque divided by 3.5 for the multiplier value will result in a 440 foot-pound uh, torque wrench set. The one inch hex bolt at 772 foot-pounds with the three and a half time multiplier will result in a 220 foot-pound torque wrench set. The one inch flathead, which utilizes a nut and a washer on the back side, has a torque setting of 617 foot pounds, which will result in a 175 foot pound torque wrench input into the 3.5 multiplier. Okay, here I've got my multiplier on my 7 8 inch hex bit drive for the piercing tips. I had to use the 
reaction arm extension in order to find a location where this wouldn't just continue to swing. This is actually made a lot easier if you close the jaw partially. If you bring the piercing tips just about down to the guide blades, a lot of times you can eliminate the use of the extra piece because your reaction arm has a place to contact down in the lower jaw. So this is set to 440 pounds. So when I pull it down, I should end up with a click once the fastener torque has reached 1,545. That's it for that bolt. Now I'll reset the torque wrench, change sockets, and move on to the flathead bolt, the one inch hex head bolt, which is 772 foot-pounds and requires 220 foot-pounds of wrench input. Now here I am with the torque wrench set to 220 foot-pounds, which will achieve 772 foot-pounds of torque on the bolt. I don't need the reaction arm extension because uh, I have this handy sawhorse right here which, which blocks the rotation. So now I can apply my input to this bolt. There you have it, that one's done. Here we are at the final bolt in this torque sequence. This is a flathead bolt with a hex head nut. Uh, I tightened it up with the impact, the electric cordless impact earlier, so hopefully the bolt doesn't roll. But if it did, I would use the socket, uh, the hex bit socket and the ratchet that I showed you earlier. Uh, this particular bolt gets torqued to 617 foot-pounds, so I've reset my torque wrench to 175. And this one's a little bit more difficult because I have to lift on it, but other than that, it's the same process. There you have it. <clears throat> this may seem like uh, trivial information, uh, but it really comes down to uh, good fastener and blade maintenance can result in a lot of uh, decreased downtime or issues with your blade pockets and blade seats. If you have questions on any of this, feel free to contact us. We can be reached at 1-888-SHEARIT, or you can go to our website, genesisattachments.com and you can get our email addresses from there. I hope this helped. Thank you.